Hello everyone, this is Cynthia on Embracing His Word. Well, I am so happy to be with you today to speak into your life. On my last video, I discussed how to uh, recognize curses and generational curses. So, uh, do you recognize a continual pattern of defeat and constant failure? Is, they, is there a generational cycle of sicknesses and diseases? You know, for example, in the, in the family bloodline, there's a continuous cycle of uh, high blood pressure, cancer, whatever the disease may be. So that's how we recognize uh, generational cycles, generational curses, familiar spirits that transfer from one generation to the next. So did you or your forefathers become involved in any type of occultism of any kind and that has passed on to the next generation? So do you constantly deal with anger or fits of rage? That can also be a generational curse that passed from one generation to the next. If your child is exhibiting uh, uh, fits of rage or uh, anger, and you want to examine, did this come from a generational curse? And it don't necessarily have to be a generational curse. It may be something that the individual have opened the door for a spirit of anger to come in. So we want to just take this before the Lord and ask God to show us the root cause. Where did, exactly did it come from? And from there, we go before God in repentance and renunciation. And if that spirit continue to abide within the person's life, they need to also experience the healing and delivering power of God so that they can receive healing in the heart, in the soul and spirit, and that spell the work of a spirit of anger out of their lives. And then you want to renew your mind so that the door is never again open to that spirit of anger to come in and dominate your life. So the definition of a generational curse is iniquity and transgression that ruled in a particular generation of family members and passes on to the next generation, affecting the next generation spiritually, financially, and physically. So these grievous and detestable sins of unrepentant parents or forefathers, grandparents, open the door for the enemy to continue his work upon the next generation. For example, look at the pattern of divorce in families or our nation as a whole. The United States has the highest rates of divorce. So when sin and iniquity take root in the heart of people, it perpetuates itself to the next generation of people, including Christians that have allowed sin and iniquity to have dominion in their lives. So have we as a people of God allowed the enemy to deceive us? Were there uh, sin and iniquity that we didn't deal with and take before the Lord is their deceit and spiritual blindness. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says, My people perish for lack of knowledge. So it is God's will that we are knowledgeable and have a clear understanding of His Word. So we can see um, when we examine our, our family line, our bloodline, where there have been major, a major door opener to, to spiritual bondage through generational curses. It can begin as early as in the womb. Spirits of fear, rejection, witchcraft can transfer also to the unborn child. Now, that is why when, when you see a loved one having a bent toward a particular iniquity such, a, such as alcoholism, sexual immorality, or whatever the forefathers opened the door to through their iniquities, it can definitely impact the unborn child and pass on even to your current children. Now, it may not seem fair that you have to deal with spiritual bondage that your parents or forefathers committed, 
But if you want to walk in total freedom and experience the wonderfully blessed life that Jesus Christ has paid the price for you and I, we must not only receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, but we have to be proactive in pursuing our healing, pursuing our deliverance from every form of generational curses or self-imposed curses. Regardless of how they came into our lives, we must pursue God wholeheartedly so that we can walk and live victorious in this day and time. Now, these spirits that are behind the curses must be confronted and cast out. Now, that is not the end of the thing when we cast these spirits out, but you as a believer in Christ, must pull down any strongholds that's abiding in your heart and so pulling down these strongholds through renewing your mind to the ways and the precepts of god so when we choose to renew our minds to the ways and precepts of of, of god we close that door that the enemy can creep into our lives when we close that door we'll make in a statement to the enemy satan i don't want any part of you i don't want any parts of generational curses i don't want any parts of you creeping into my life so that's how we close the door by renewing our minds getting into the word of god being filled with the holy spirit allowing the lord to just uh, shape and mold and conform us more and more into the image of Jesus Christ. So our freedom is not just a matter of casting out the spirits, but our lives must be completely surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. That is a part of the battle. So every day that we wake up, we must realize that it is a battle because the enemy, the scripture says, he walks around seeking whom he may devour. So if we recognize that if I embrace the Lord Jesus Christ, embrace his word, embrace his will for my life, then I can walk victorious. I can walk and experience the blessings of God. So do you know? that your blessings are directly con um, directly connected to your obedience. So when we choose to be obedient to the Lord, that's when God can truly release the blessings into our lives and stop the work of the enemy that wants to bring curses into our lives. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 7, 1 says, because we have these promises, dear friends, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that can defile our body or spirit. And let us work toward complete holiness because we fear God. So I pray for you today that God will release the reverent fear of him into your lives. And so in this day and time, we need to be praying and asking God, Lord, I want to walk in reverent fear. Because if we have the reverent fear of the Lord in our lives, we will not be so easily tempted and, and give in and succumb to the ways of the enemy. So when we're praying and seeking the Lord, one of your prayers should be, Father, I want to walk in the reverent fear of you. So let's look at recognizing these familiar spirits, how to recognize the familiar spirits that, that is behind generational curses. You know, a major part of our Lord's ministry were, was dealing with healing and casting out demonic spirits. So today we're going to talk about how to recognize the familiar spirit. Now the definition of familiar spirit um, it is used nine times in the King James Version of the New Testament in reference to demons. The idea literally refers to demons that are close or familiar to a person, which means it's in the bloodline or family uh, somehow. The idea um, of these spirits go from 
uh, generation to generation manifesting in an actual family of bloodline or on a piece of land. Now, how can they manifest in the family bloodline? They monitor the family members looking for an opportunity to influence the person, to invade the person's soul, uh, to infiltrate a person's life for the purpose of continu continuing on with the family curse or the family iniquities. They want to continue on with the family disease, such as a continuous cycle of cancer. These spirits want to continue on in the family bloodline with the spirit of alcoholism so for the sole purpose of destroying a family sometimes you come across oftentimes you will come across families that are stricken with a spirit of poverty or families that are stricken with uh, so many families members that have been in prison because of fraudulent behavior, theft, robbery. So we want to recognize where this came from. This is definitely a familiar spirit that's operating in the family bloodline. So uh, number one, look for continual patterns of behavior that goes against God's ways and and his be uh, goes against God's ways and his precepts. So when you recognize this type of behavior that's exhibiting itself in the family through one of your children or someone in the family, recognize you can say without a shadow of doubt this is a familiar spirit and it is uh, behind a generational curse. Number two, are there spirits presenting itself to you as a loved one that has passed? I've heard people say, oh, I saw my grandmother in the room. That definitely is not your grandmother, but that is a spirit masquerading as your loved one. So you need to recognize that uh, the demon spirit that's trying to entrap you some kind of way um, so just reject that spirit don't embrace it as a loved one but you reject it and stand on the authority of God commanded that spirit to go from your, your presence and use the name of Jesus because it's through the blood of Jesus Christ that we are divinely protected so are there ungodly soul ties that are unbroken with someone that you were involved in a relationship? You're having dreams of that person to the point there's sexual immorality in the dreams. So that is definitely a familiar spirit that's visiting you through dreams. The number four, is there a lack of desire to break the iniquity? or that uh, is there complacency or apathy you have no vision for life you have no no goals in life and so you want to recognize that is the work of the enemy trying to um, prevent you to fulfill your purpose your calling and the destiny that god has planned out for you number five you want to be able to recognize are there addictions addictions to alcoholism addicted to people that is abusive verbally physically sexually so if there is an addiction there you want to recognize a familiar spirit is behind it uh, spirits of anger and rage and bitterness many families are bound with a spirit of bitterness and I often talk about this when I did my, uh, when we had our family, family reunion. We talked about how I talked about in a message that I gave our family members. So when I, when we had our family reunion um, this summer, I had the opportunity to speak to our family. And I also addressed um, generational curses uh, that came from uh, slavery 
the enslavement of, of our forefathers. No doubt our forefathers, as I'm speaking to African Americans that went through the enslavement, um, experienced very uh, traumatic experiences in their lives. And, and in turn, this will cause them to be very bitter and no doubt uh, they, our forefathers did not resolve a lot of bitterness that they experienced uh, in their lifetime. And so this generational spirit, I, the Lord has been showing me, has been passing from generation to generation, especially in the African-American family. And so um, I, as I'm speaking to the African-American families, we must deal with uh, generational curses of bitterness. We, we don't want to transfer that spirit from one generation to the next onto our children. We want to walk in the fullness of God's love. We are loved, we are accepted, and we need to break that curse off our lives because I don't want to see the, the spirit of bitterness been exhibited in the African-American families. I don't want to see a continuous cycle of unforgiveness and easily been offended. We need to break this cycle off our lives so that we can demonstrate the true abounding love of God has been worked in our hearts and our soul. And so these familiar spirits like to stay in the family bloodline to continue the generational curse. Now, we don't want to walk under a generational curse or even a self-imposed curse. Now, Proverbs chapter 26, verse 2 says, Like a fluttering sparrow or a darting swallow, an undeserved curse will not land on its intended victim. So, when we go through repentance and we renounce the sins of our forefathers, renounce the sins of our grandparents that practice um, bitterness, that practice uh, prejudice, that practice um, hatred, we renounce these things and you state before the Lord and before the enemy, I will not be a person that practices bitterness. I will not be a, a person that practices hatred because I, I renounce the spirit of hatred. I renounce the spirit that's behind uh, bitterness. I renounce the familiar spirit, the generational spirit, and the powerful name of Jesus because I don't want to have anything to do with it. I will choose, I choose to walk in the love of God. I choose forgiveness. I choose to honor and to obey my Lord because he said that we are to forgive. And so that's how we break the power of that spirit in our lives. And if it needs to be cast out, it needs to be cast out. And if we need to renew our minds, we need to get into the word of God and get in those scriptures that talks about love, how we should um, conduct ourselves according to the will, the ways, and the purposes of God. That's how we break free and take a stand and don't pass that spirit on to your children. So as believers in Christ Jesus, we must take a stand against familiar spirits that wants to operate in our lives. Familiar spirits, they are evil spirits, demons that have no place in the life of the Christian. We are to live by God's spirit and take a stand against spiritual forces of evil as we live for the Lord. So I talked about how these spirits that can transfer over into the family. Now, on another level, familiar spirits also operate through mediums, fortune tellers, and people who practice divination, observer of times, enchanter, or a witch, a wizard, or a necromancer. Now, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18, uh, verses, um, starting at verse 9, it says, When you come into the land that the Lord your God has given you, you shall not learn to follow the abominable practices of those nations. 
There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or his daughter as an offering, anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens, or a sorcerer or a charmer or a medium or a necromancer, a one who inquires of the dead. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God is driving them out before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God for these nations, which you are about to dispossess, dispossess, listen to fortune tellers or to diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not, has not allowed you to do this. So here in the word of God, the Israelites were instructed that they were not to have any part with these abominations, such as practicing divination or going uh, to fortune telling or even practicing fortune telling or interpreting omens or even a sort, the practice of a sorcerer or a charmer or a medium. And so in this day and time, we even have television shows called The Medium. And so, you know, we are in the last evil days and people have no shame. People have no fear of God. So that is why uh, that the scripture says that the, in the last days, the increase of wickedness shall come about. So we're, we're instructed in the word of God that we should have no part in this. When those type of shows come on television, don't even take a moment to look at it because it's definitely of Satan. And God does not want us to partake in such things. Do not partake in going to seek out a fortune teller because definitely there's a consequence, there's a judgment behind those things when we participate in such things. I want to read an in 1 Samuel chapter 28, verse 3 and 9. So we find King Saul had removed witches, wizards, and mediums from Israel. In verse 3 it states, And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Yet in desperation, Saul, thinking that he's so wise, sought a medium so he could summon the spirit of Samuel for help, for help during a difficult time. Now, this was a, a very, pure, very, very poor choice that Saul uh, decided to, uh, to do to seek out a medium. After he had removed all the witches and wizards, now this was very poor. This is why I say don't do things uh, and you think you're doing it in secret and nobody sees you and you think you're covering it up. God sees it. The devil sees it. And when the devil sees it, there's a grand opportunity for him to just come right on into your life and wreak death and, and release uh, poverty, release sickness, release disease. So don't think that we can do things behind the scene and get away with it. So the result of what Saul had done in seeking out a medium, it was a divine judgment of God released upon Saul. So his life was lost and God uh, released death upon Saul because he opened the door uh, for a spirit of death. His sons also died. They all died in war. They opened the door to the spirit of death to invade their lives through their own disobedience. So we as believers in Jesus Christ, we must be uh, really choosing to obey the ways of God. Another way that Christians need to watch out um, that when you're going to an assembly or going to a church, and someone is using a title such as a prophet, apostle, or it, whatever they may be calling themselves by uh, to fleece the body of Christ for their financial gain. We, in this day and time, we need to be praying and asking God to give us wise discernment. You want to be able to not be suspicious, but 
asking the Lord for wise discernment when you're in this these type of churches. Because uh, the enemy will use such people, such as false prophets, uh, use them uh, to, uh, to use the spirit of divination to prophesy uh, good things for you in your behalf for the sole purpose of making you out of merchandise. You see, uh, 2 Peter uh, chapter 2, verse 3, it says, And through covetousness shall they with fain words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time... So another version of 2 Peter chapter 2, verse uh, 3, it says, In their greed, they will make up clever lies to get hold of your money. But God condemned them long ago, and their destruction will not be delayed. So church, don't play the part of a fool. Be wise in the Lord. Use the discernment of the Lord. Pray for wise discernment in these last days. Um, recognize when um, someone is presented themselves with all these titles for the sole purpose of gaining uh, financial gain through covetousness they're trying to use uh, words of false pretense pretending that you know they're working through the spirit of the living God when in all actuality they're working through a spirit of familiarity, familiar spirits, um, spirits of divination. So we want to be wise and discerning. And we want to start breaking off um, the power and the effects of familiar spirits, breaking off the power and the effects of generational curse through repentance, through renunciation, uh, declaring to the enemy that you want nothing to do with his works in your life. So let me do a prayer for you and thank you for being a part of, of this ministry. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click the bell so that you'll get the new content that comes in. And I thank you for being a part of this ministry. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your mercies your tender mercies and your compassion that you extend to our lives every morning that we wake up lord you're extending your great compassion lord you're extending your mercy we say thank you father for your faithfulness and father we ask for your forgiveness lord forgiveness for the sins of our forefathers forgiveness for the sins lord of our grandparents our parents lord forgive us of our sins Lord, things that we open the door to, for example, alcoholism, forgive us, oh God. Lord, we don't want anything to do with the generational curse of alcoholism. We don't want to do have anything to do with the generational curse, Lord, of adultery, Father. Lord, we don't want to have anything to do with the generational curse of abuse or abandonment, Father. We don't want to have anything to do with the generational curse of anger, rage, and violence. So, Father, we, we ask for your forgiveness. Break off the effects and the power of this curse in our lives. We pray in the powerful name of Jesus. We renounce anger. We renounce rage and violence. We renounce addictions, Lord God, of all kinds, Father. Lord, whatever that addiction is, you want to renounce it specific, specifically. Father, we renounce, Lord, giving ourselves, Lord, over to any form of drug use, Lord, alcohol use, Lord God. We renounce, Lord, emotional dependency, codependency. Lord, we renounce fears that we open the door to. We, re we renounce, Lord God, and ask for your forgiveness for idolatry, Father God. Lord, we ask for forgiveness for going to the extreme, Lord, and, and the way that we handle our finances, Lord God. Lord, not caring for our children, not being responsible, Lord, oh God, responsible parents. We renounce those ways in the powerful name of Jesus. 
Lord, I renounce and we renounce, Lord, any word that we have spoken and should not have spoken negatively over someone, Father. Lord, we renounce the spirit of pride. We don't want pride to be in our lives. We don't want rebellion to be in our lives. So we ask for your forgiveness and we break it off, Lord, by the sword of the spirit in the powerful name of Jesus. We command that spirit to go. Lord, we renounce rejection. Lord, your word says that we are loved and we are accepted. So we come against the spirit of rejection. We command the spirit of rejection to leave us. We cut it off by the sword of the spirit and the powerful name of Jesus. Lord, we renounce insecurity. Lord, we are not called to be insecure. So Lord, we stand in the promise of your word that we are loved. We are very much accepted. Lord, you love us deeply. You love us affectionately. So, so Lord, we embrace your word, what it says about us. We embrace it, Father. We receive your love, Lord. And we cast out from us the spirit of rejection. And finally, we renounce, Lord, religious bondage, legalism, uh, a false religions. Lord, we repent, Lord, for, for any involvement in false religion, any form of occultism. So right here, you want to name that occultism or name that false religion and renounce it and ask God for his forgiveness. Lord, we repent of any sexual sin, Lord. We repent and renounce it. And Father, we say sexual sin has no place in my life, in the believer's life, so we renounce it. Father, we choose to present ourselves to you, Father, as a living sacrifice, to be holy, to be acceptable unto you. That is our reasonable service. That, that is what we embrace, Father. Father, we choose not to be conformed to the ways of this world, but transform by the renewing of our mind. Father, thank you that you're renewing our mind, our soul, our will to your purpose and your plan for our lives. Lord, we come against the spirit that comes to bring unbelief. We break off that spirit. Father, we declare our faith, our trust, our reliance is in you and your word, Lord, and in your precepts. Father, we say thank you, Lord. So we command the spirit of unbelief. We come against every antichrist spirit. We bind that spirit. Father, help us to recognize it. Open our spiritual eyes to see it. So we renounce the spirit that's antichrist in the powerful name of Jesus. We stand in the promises of your word, Father. We thank you that you have sent your son, Jesus Christ, and that he shed his blood, Lord, that we may have eternal life, that we may have deliverance and healing in our lives. Father, we say thank you for it. Father, we renounce that spirit that says that we are not worthy. We are unworthy. And that causes us to have so low self-esteem. We come against that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that you loved us so much. And you made us worthy through Jesus Christ. Because you gave us your only begotten son. You loved us even when we were in sin. And Lord, we receive your love. We are worthy in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for your love and your kindness and your patience. Thank you, Father, for your mighty deliverance. Lord, we declare these things in the powerful name of Jesus. And we praise you, Father, for your goodness and for your favor in our lives in Jesus name and so on my next video I want you to look for that I will continue teach continue to teach on breaking curses and restoring blessings so don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so that you can get my next uh, con uh, new content be blessed and have a wonderful glorious day in the name of Jesus, amen.